Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video, I'm gonna be talking about sodium. So for so many of you, it's very likely you've hopped on the scales one morning only to find your weight is significantly higher than the previous day. And it's very likely that that is due to the sodium intakes from yesterday. So while there are many variables that can affect our day-to-day -day weight fluctuations, today I'm specifically gonna talk on salt. We'll discuss those other variables in future videos. So I wanted to give you a bit of an overview about sodium in general, uh, how our body responds to high sodium intakes, how it responds to low sodium intakes, as well as salt sensitivity. Sodium is the most abundant cation in our extracellular space. So this is basically the fluid outside of the cells. So when we consume sodium, our body absorbs that across the intestine, it travels to the kidney, it's filtered, and then it returns to the blood or it's excreted. Now the amount of sodium that we reabsorb is directly proportionate to our current serum sodium levels. Normal sodium levels range anywhere from say 135 to 145, I think it's micromoles per liter. And our body likes to keep that tightly regulated. So for many of the processes that take place in the body, there's always, uh, I guess, a period where we're trying to keep it at equilibrium. So we refer to this as homeostasis. So sodium is regulated by a hormone called aldosterone. In response to a high sodium meal, there's a couple of things that are gonna happen. So first off, our thirst receptors in the hypothalamus are going to signal us to drink. So sodium moves from our intestine across into the blood. We're gonna see an increase in those serum sodium levels and that's potentially going to increase our blood pressure as I said the body likes to keep a tight regulation on those serum sodium levels so a couple of things are going to happen our kidneys are going to start excreting more of that sodium and we're going to see a shift of fluid uh, moving from our intracellular spaces so that's inside the muscle inside tissue into the extracellular space and until our body is able to regulate that sodium and get it back to normal, there's gonna be a transient increase in our total body weight. Now, the degree of increase in our total body weight due to the retention of water is directly proportional to how much sodium we consumed in our meal. So if you had a heap of sodium, there's a very good chance you're gonna see anywhere from like a three, potentially even a 5% increase in your body weight as our body tries to return to that place of equilibrium. Now, what about a low sodium intake? Well, it basically behaves in the exact reverse. So a low sodium diet means that we're gonna have our sodium levels full, uh, and that's gonna cause our blood pressure to decrease. What happens then is that we start to reabsorb more sodium back across through our kidneys uh, so that we can get that uh, serum sodium back to a normal place. So it's also likely that our extracellular fluid is gonna start moving into the intracellular space. So often, I've always found this interesting in the bodybuilding perspective or looking at it from a bodybuilding perspective because sodium actually can have a very important role, particularly in the divisions that call for a more vascular look. Sodium is really important because it gives you that pump. Some of the strategies that people take using you know, sodium loading and then sodium depletion and water loading, it doesn't quite make sense because our body is definitely going to end up regulating itself anyway. And you could end up looking incredibly flat uh, if your intakes are too low. So what are the recommendations for sodium intakes? The minimum amount of sodium that we should consume in our diet is around 500 milligrams per day. Sodium is actually really important for a number of important regulatory roles. So things like nerve transductions, muscle uh, contraction and relaxation, as well as maintaining a certain concentration gradient uh, that allows for micronutrients to kind of move across different tissues. We also have an adequate intake. The adequate intake recommendation is 1500 milligrams per day. Now, interestingly, there's also an upper limit and the upper limit is around 2300 milligrams per day. Now, given what I've just said, and I've discussed the fact that the body is very good at regulating our serum sodium levels, then why do we have an upper limit if our body can easily excrete it? 30% of the population are salt sensitive. So salt sensitivity means that if you have a high sodium diet, your body isn't as easily able to excrete that excess sodium. So that's going to increase your arterial pressure. Your blood pressure is going to go up. This is also known as hypertension. 
and that can become a problem. So high blood pressure actually increases our risk of a number of different chronic diseases from heart disease, also increases our risk for stroke uh, and various other cardiovascular conditions. So what happens is if our blood pressure remains elevated, it puts a lot of pressure on the atrial wall and those walls can start to thicken and they can also start to constrict. And that means that the delivery of nutrients to important you know, tissues and organs within the body is now restricted. And that's one of the things that can cause a risk of having a stroke. For about 30% of us, it is actually important to monitor our daily sodium intake because we may not be able to excrete it like the rest of us. So how do we assess if we're actually salt sensitive? Generally, the test that we have is four days consuming a very low sodium intake. So it's around 250 milligrams for four days straight. Then it's followed up with four days of very high sodium intakes. And if the difference in your blood pressure is greater than 5%, that's how we kind of diagnose somebody for having salt sensitivity. So what predisposes us to salt sensitivity? Well, there are a couple of variables. Some of these are genetic, so unfortunately we don't have a say uh, in whether or not we're going to, but other things include uh, our demographic, our environment, our ethnicity, our age, as well as just having other comorbidities. So generally people with other uh, health conditions are also at greater risk of having something like hypertension. So to wrap this video up, I guess, there is something to be said about sodium and its effects on our body weight. You can see that it can cause transient increases in our body weight. Generally after 24 to 48 hours, our body has been able to get things back to normal uh, so that our blood serum sodium levels are within the normal ranges. Salt intake probably is important for some of us, uh, if you are salt sensitive. But the good news is for many of us, the stress that used to exist around having to have low sodium intakes isn't quite as bad as it was. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions about sodium, please leave a comment below and I look forward to seeing you next time.